day and I'm really grateful to participate. I think, uh, like most of us here, I feel inspired to see people in this square in such incredible numbers after the results of the general election. I think like most of you here, I felt crushing disappointment on the morning after the election. Unlike many of you, I felt personally to blame for it. <laughs> for a broken country. To say, it's inspiring again to, to hear today people are participating in politics in a more conventional way like Caroline, people that are new to the conversation like Charlotte Church, People like Mark who've been bearing the flag for years and years and years inspiring comedians and entertainers to participate in this conversation. My personal, my personal feelings about this movement are very, very deep. Without a welfare state, I wouldn't have been educated. Without a welfare state, my mum would have died of cancer several times. I am personally being a comedian, so somewhat grateful for it. What I feel like now and what Mark articulated so beautifully is that it's really very hard for the people that are here today, for all of us who feel moved to come here for the same reason, for the same sense of loss, for the same sense of alienation, to have our voices heard in there. How are we doing? Am I going too quickly? I'm doing well with the, uh, with the manual interpreter. Thank you, what did that mean? That was very explicitly like jiggle boobs. <laughs> this has been a really inspiring journey that I've been getting educated in public for the last few years. Not that the state education in this country is inadequate, but to be part of the housing movement, to work with people like Focus E15 and the New Era Mums has been incredible to see what happens when people come together, to be inspired by women like Caroline Lucas, who demonstrate that there are people with civility, decency, conviviality in the parliament. Did that all work all right? That felt like a stream. Within the parliamentary process. I feel inspired feeling somewhat disheartened by, I don't know, the things that happen when I, like the, at the moment outside Downing Street, where I called that geezer a snide or the moment with Miliband where it felt like I sort of negatively participated in parliamentary democracy. I've met so many inspiring people. People that are prepared, people that, you know, I've got people saying like we need welfare for the vulnerable members of society. I feel like we're all vulnerable members of society. I feel like they could happen to any of us. It's been something that's been around me all my life. What I feel like we've done is created a culture around the worst aspects of our nature. I have selfishness in me, I have greed in me, I have the egomaniacal tendencies of Boris Johnson or Rupert Murdoch or David Cameron, but I don't turn them into policies. I go to, you know, 12 step meetings and psychiatrists to try and deal with that shit. We're living in a culture where the worst aspects of our nature prevail. I don't think it's always been like this. I remember growing up with strong unions, with strong sense of social culpability and social care. And I believe the solutions may be simpler, at least the part in it within which I can participate. I feel that we need to learn to talk to one another, communicate with one another, recognise that we're all having a similar human experience here, that our time on this earth is fragile and temporary. And if we don't build systems, ideas and organisations on the principles of love and togetherness, then the consequences are unconscionable. My personal participation is I'm happy to serve this movement to serve you all in whichever way you see fit. I'm happy to participate in politics to make it humorous, a laugh, decent, built around good principles. It's been said before that the right look for converts and the left look for traitors. We have to look for new ways to collaborate now, to accept that the price of admission to this movement cannot be perfection. That we have to allow whoever wants to be part of this movement to participate in whatever way they can. All we're actually trying to do is build a society that's better for us on an individual and collective level. Better for all of us. 
I don't, I've spent time now among the aristocracy, around Hollywood elites. I don't think they're truly happy. I don't think they know how to love one another properly. I'm assuming that the vast majority of people in there, perhaps Jeremy and Caroline aside, are not having very successful sex lives. And I think that a culture that's held again by a perpetually suspended chopper is an indication that something's wrong. People coming together to take back their streets, take back their communal spaces, to communicate in ways that are built on what I believe are spiritual principles, but the atheists among you might believe are common decency. The common decency of being a member of this society, of reaching out for one another, of trying to put your personal selfish needs second, behind the needs of all of us as a collective. I spent the first part of my life trying to escape from a mundane, suburban, single life, welfare supportive existence. I thought fame and fortune would make me valuable. I found out that it's empty. I'm going to spend the rest of my life belonging to community, embracing community and helping in whatever way I can. I'm so glad that that's not the moment I'm going to be executed from behind. I thought that was my moment. All right, yeah, it's time to keep the band ready. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we've got some musical entertainment. It's been lovely speaking to you. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful night. Stay with the movement. Cheers. Take it easy. Ta-da.